Hi everybody, it's me, RG Jewelry, and welcome to my tutorial on how I do and make audio animatronic characters. After seeing this tutorial, you may be able to create your very own audio animatronic character. <laughs> well, uh, everybody told me to um, show them how I did it. And people told me, am I going to make Chunky Cheese? Well, I decided to make Chunky Cheese, and I also decided to make this tutorial. Using a little animation <laughs> and a lot of imagination, here's how I make these audio animatronic characters. First, before I decided to make Chunky Cheese, I had to decide which one I wanted to make. The first Chunky Cheese looked like a rat. It was a half body one. And sometimes I make a standing up body one. And I didn't really quite like that one that much. Then the one that they redressed up Ralph the Wolf to be Chunky Cheese was the most horrible Chunky Cheese I ever did see. It didn't even look like a, I don't know what it looked like. It looked like a mouse rat. <laughs> that was ugly. I really didn't really have anything to do with that one. But then I saw the newer one, the newest one that they have, the only one they have now, the only one audio animatronic that's there, is the newer Chunky Cheese, and here's the cutest one of them all. So I decided to do this one. And I bet you agree, he is the best. <laughs> Ah, it's sad that they don't have all the other ones there. They just have one animatronic now. Now that you figured out which one you want to make, or what design you want to make, you simply draw it out on a piece of paper to the size you want the character to be, an original size drawing. Then you would sketch out how you're going to make it move, how you're going to add the servos, what you're going to use to make it with. I'll show you all the steps of all the parts. Uh, in this one, we use a soda bottle for the head ba the head support and the body support. Then we stick the servos in there. We use a cardboard support to hold the servos in place. I make cardboard brackets to make the neck and head move. A and a couple of uh, wires for the arms connected to the servos that are connected to the thing, uh, to, to, to the bottle. And um, wooden sticks, wooden dowels to make the legs. A pivot tube, which I got from the dog bone baggies that when I walk my doggy, I get the little portable baggies. I get to save those little tubes. If you don't got those tubes, you can use a pen and cut the tube from that. Uh, and a couple of wood dowels that fit through that to make it pivot and turn. Well, I'll show you all the steps. Well, this is a basic layout of how the movements look in this picture. Okay, now that you've figured out what kind of character you wanted to make and what size you want to make your character, I usually make my characters about maybe anywhere between 18 inches high to maybe a little less, a little big. Well, this is my layout on the sizing of all the parts. I'm going to show it to you. You can print this layout out. I'm going to freeze for, for a while. Okay, and then this is the other part. Okay, now that we sh I showed you what the layout is like on how all the parts are, I would explain to you what that diagram is as I go along. Well, these are the things you're going to need to make your audio animatronic character. First, you're going to need some Elmer's wood glue. Then you're going to need some wooden dowels and some wooden sticks that you could buy in a craft place or you can cut it out of wood. I usually use maybe one fourth inch plywood would be good. You can make get a wooden circle for your base or a wooden star, like I did for the Chunky Cheese. I used a wooden circle on Billy Bob. Get some round dowels and get some square dowels, the wooden dowels. They sell them at Walmart in a package. 
Here is a diagram of what your wooden parts should look like and it's the size. So I'm going to show you this up now. Okay, the next thing is you can get some cardboard. Uh, heavy duty cardboard, the thickest cardboard you can get. And if you can't get very thick cardboard, you would have to double the pieces up and glue them together with the wood glue. Here is the diagram on what the wooden pieces look like. Okay, you're going to need, according to how many movements you're going to make in your characters, either five or six movements, you will need five to six servo motors. These are the servo motors that I use. I get these at a robot shop. It's www.robotshop.com. Uh, H-I-T. These are the rope small micro servo motors and this is the number of these motors it's df robot micro servo motor its product code is rb dfr dash one two four these servo motors only cost 350 a piece at robot shop so these are very, very good. Also, I use a servo controller. This one works with computer. When I move the levers up and down, I can move one servo at a time. I'm still trying to figure out how to program all the servos to work together with the soundtrack. If anybody out there knows how what servo controller I need and an easy to operate program, uh, what I need to really synchronize these motors to the soundtrack the easy way by pots, pots and puppeting it rather than going crazy with numbers and all those other crazy things. Please let me know because that's the part I need a little help on. But I know how to build these things and how to make each motor move and how to show you how to put them together. Maybe somebody can help me how to control them. <laughs> and we have to be a great working team. Well, Let's get on. This is what the servo motors look like, and this is the controller I use. Now, you're going to need to get some plaster uh, to make your plaster cast so you can make your mold. You would use plastiline clay to sculpt your face out, like I did here when I was making Ralph the Wolf. For the hands that move up and down on your character, you would want to use a lightweight clay. I use Clayola Model Magic, which is a light, fluffy, foamy clay, which would be good to make hands. So you would use this soft clay to sculpture the hands because it's lightweight and it's not too hard on the servos. So when the arms go up and down, it's not that much weight to move. But when you make chunky cheese, his hands are stuffed. So he just gets stuffed up hands. Um, if you want to sculpt your hands for chunky, you could do it the same way with this clay. But it usually has stuffed up hands. <laughs> That's usually how the chunky cheese characters are. Okay, now, to make the feet, we would use sculpty clay, the one that you bake in the oven. It's a heavier clay, and it makes it more firmer for standing and keeps your, your character standing upright. After you sculpture your feet, you would want to stick your wooden sticks in to make the holes before you bake it. I make it a little bit bigger so the sticks go down as far as you want them. And make sure they are even. And after you bake it, you can paint it. <laughs> okay. Now, the next step is after you make your face with the plaster, you would make a mold. After you make the mold, I'll show you how that's done in the next step, step by step. Uh, you would want to buy this rubber stuff. It's called a mold making uh, casting rubber. You would pour this rubber into this plaster mold. 
and then when you take that rubber face out it comes out like this and then you could paint it with your craft paints like this the next thing that you're going to need is soda bottles or any kind of bottle that you want to make for the size of your body I used that medium sized bottle that says root beer for the body for chunky cheese I used the bigger size bottle for uh, fats I usually use that skinnier size bottle for Ralph the Wolf and the other size bottle I used for Duke the Dog and Mitzi it depends on the size body you want to make on your character and that's the bottle that you would use but when you make the bottle you measure your width so your middle bar has got enough movement for swing I'll show you what that means when we get to the uh, building part when we make the skeleton structure this is the step one of the things you need if anybody has a doggy and you got this little dog bone thing that's in the shape of a dog bone uh, don't throw out those little tubes those little tubes that the little bags are on are your pivot tubes now if you don't have a doggy and you don't have these little bone tubes don't be in dismay I'm sure around the house you've got a bunch of old pens that are no good just take the cylinder from the pen and then cut that down to size the hollow tube from the pen will work just fine as long as your wooden dowel can fit through it so when you make the pivot for your body movement it would work and for your mount movement I'll explain that in the next step then you're gonna want to need to get some fabric like plush for the face because he's fuzzy he's a little gray plush purple fabric for his uh, top green for his pants yellow felt for the details and a little green felt and a little bit of pink for his ears and his hand pads uh, and then you have all the stuff you need to make your wonderful character uh, I have a little something to show you for this fun you could print this up this is a little puppet of uh, chunky cheese you can print this up and you can um, paint it up and it's you can make this to the size that you want your doll to be but mind you if your doll is bigger than 18 inches you're going to want to get bigger motors bigger servo motors the next size uh, the little ones won't be strong enough to move the weight this here scale balances perfect so try to keep in the scale like 18 inches no bigger than that okay well that's does it for step one <laughs> the next one will be step two part two look for the video as soon as I get it together or go up online